Okay, here it is guys, the long-awaited service video that's been requested by a lot of you. And we've reached the 300 hour mark. So this is actually going to be the service that uh, completes the restoration of this tractor since I bought it last fall. Actually, it's been about six months. And the only things remaining are the transmission oil and the engine oil that need to be changed. I'm going to inspect the spark plugs, change those if necessary. So we're going to be going through the tractor, but the first phase of this video will cover the transmission. Uh, that's what I hope to get done today. So the first step will be to remove the mower from it. And we're also going to take the back wheel weights off since we're going to be lifting it up into the air and pulling off a wheel just so I can get better access. So first we're going to start with the suitcases on the back, get rid of those. Next we're going to remove the mower deck to make access easier and of course we need to do that to lift the tractor. Now the first step is to make sure the implement is lifted up, so raise the mower deck to the highest position. Now I found that putting a piece of wood underneath the deck and lifting it is going to be helpful in the next step. I'm going to do that to the back as well. And now we're going to lower the deck back down all the way. At this point the deck is being held up by the strips of wood and it's going to relieve the pressure on the latches that we have to undo below in the next step. And while we're here we're going to do this next step which is pushing this release lever. Now we're basically removing the tension from the drive belt as well as the I believe the deck belts but more importantly the drive belt. This is That's what allows us to take the deck off. Next there are these latches in the back. We're going to pull those first. See if I can hold the camera here while I do it. And you're going to pull that out. And what that does is it releases from the lever, from basically the lifter. So that just disengaged it. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. All right, here we are on the other side. We're going to pull this one as well. Now that's free, so we're almost done. At this point, you can pull the lever back up to pull those arms so they clear. On the front of the tractor, in front of the dry pulleys, you're going to find a lever that's spring-loaded. And there's a bracket that slides out and unhooks from the mower. So first we drop it from here. And then you simply push forward and it releases. Of course the belt will still be in the way, but we're pulling that off next. All right, here's a better angle so you can see what we did. It was hooked in down in here and it just comes out and drops down. And the pulley that we need to access is this one, which now should come off with no problem. I might need two hands to do it, so I'm just going to have to cheat the shot. So pretend I took it off. With two hands it was a piece of cake, so now you can see it's off of it. Here's the belt loose. So next we're going to pull the boards out from underneath the mower. There's always one that's a pain. Now the mower is sitting flat and level on the ground. The couple times I did this, I found it easier to pull it out from this side. The 
you may have to give it a little bit of a turn. We're almost out. Now all that's left is to remove the mower drive belt from the pulley. Comes right down like that. You have to work your way around a little tab here. And then this comes with it. And we're done. All right, that wasn't too bad at all. Mower deck is pretty easy to remove on this tractor. The next step is we're going to loosen the lug nuts on the back rear tire before we jack it up and pull the wheel off. Of course you should loosen these before jacking it up into the air. That's pretty good. I'm going to be using a scissor jack lifting the tractor in the middle and a piece of wood in between the jack and the tractor to spread it out evenly and also to prevent any kind of damage. For extra stability we're also going to lower the back blade which is why I left it on. Here's a quick shot of how I have the jack positioned with the piece of wood just bracing across. Um, Try to avoid any kind of protrusions that stick out below. I've lifted it from here before, it's a good spot. The jack wound up being a little bit too far to the other side, so it was lifting the other side up, so I pulled it out this way, so we're going to try lifting it again. And this time it should lift this side. Alright, they should come off fairly easily now. We've got it set up and on the back here I added a jack just for stability so we're looking good there. On the bottom I found the drain. That's your oil drain that's a 17 millimeter and there's the filter which looks to me like it's uh, pretty old and beat up so that makes me wonder if that's the original uh, oil filter on here for the transmission Even though I know the fluid has been changed. So right now we're going to have a look at the dipstick Which is on the back here Mine's a little bit harder to get to with all this crap on it, but we can still get to it just barely Try from the other side All right got that off. Let me wipe that off Okay, we've pulled the diff stick and I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like it's actually overfilled right now. So whoever did this overfilled the transmission. So we're going to measure what we take out and we're going to put in less than what is in there. All right, we're going to loosen the drain and we're going to collect all the oil in a container. And then we're going to transfer that to our measuring container to find out how much we're taking out. So we're going to let this drain out all the way.
comes to a trickle, we're going to loosen the oil filter. Took a little bit of effort, but I got it loose. And of course, don't forget to move the oil tray over. This is a lot easier with two hands. I'm pretty sure this is the original filter. We're just going to spin this off and let it dump into the container. Alright. And I can see it's still trickling out. So we're just going to let this thing trickle all the way out and get back to it in just a few minutes. All right, I'm 100% convinced that the oil filter that came off of there is original and it's uh, made in USA. There's the new one made in Mexico. You can see the differences in them. The other one definitely looks like an antique and you can see the corrosion around the ring so I can't believe that that's the original oil filter so at least we're starting fresh now. One thing that hasn't changed however is the part number. The part number on the new one in 2021 remains the same as the one that was made in 2006. Just a little bit different design. I've also gone ahead and put a bead of oil around the rubber gasket that's going to make it easier to get it on there as well as taking it off. Underneath I've already gone ahead and wiped all this off all the debris that was on there and I've also got the uh, drain plug replaced already and that's already tightened down that's just a little bit of oil left over. There was no crush washer on it so if I recheck it later and there's leaks I could always add a crush washer to it. So let's get that oil filter put on there real quick so no contaminants go inside. Now the oil filter should be just hand tight. And make sure you're not cross threaded. Should go on there nice and smooth and I'll give it an extra tightening uh, when I put the camera down. Then we'll be ready to add the fluid. That's how we're looking. And you can see the underside there. There's the fan for the transmission. So let's see, get a good look at that. All right, let's get this thing filled. All right, now we're going to find out how much oil to add back in. All right, we're to the brim. Well, look at that. Now I've done made a mess. So I'm thinking when we put it back, we're only going to fill it up to maybe about here and then pour that amount in, uh, whatever that comes out to. But I'm just going to eyeball that uh, maybe it's that much. Uh, that much too much. So I'm gonna look up the exact number what's supposed to be in there and find out what number we come up with. All right, here's the deal. According to the manual, the transmission holds 5.7 quarts, but what we pulled out of there when this container overflowed, this is a one gallon pitcher, uh, we probably lost another maybe quarter quart. So we basically, there's about a quart and a half uh, that it looks like you can't get access to when you do the oil change. Now since mine was overfilled, 
what we're going to do is I'm going to go two fingers as the replacement oil that's going to go in here. So that this is the amount that we're going to put back in. What came out of there was probably about, if the container could have gone higher, maybe about that much, just another hair. All right, so I've gone ahead and disposed of the oil into my uh, recycling container. And we're going to go ahead and fill this back up two fingers off the top with the fresh oil. Not a big deal that I'm using the same container because if you think about it, when it goes into the transmission, it's going to pick up the other oil that's in there anyway. And there's about a quart, more than a quart of oil technically somewhere in there still that I guess can't be gotten to unless you take the whole transmission apart. All right. See right about where we are. I feel good about there. I'd rather add a little bit more than put too much in. So that gives us still a little bit in there. So let's get it transferred in. We're going to be using an oil transfer pump. And I've got the line already put in all the way to the base. And here's the little pump set up. It's 12 volt and it's going to transfer all of that over there. So I'll get this set up on the tripod and we can uh, see how we do. It's going through the line right now. There we go. All right, here we are several hours later. It's now 11 o'clock at night, and the, the, the tractor's all put together. Took it off the jacks, and unfortunately, uh, when I went to check the dipstick, it was completely dry. So, what we have set up is the pump again, and that amount that is in the container is the remainder of the gallon. So, we're going to try about half of that, stop, check the dipstick, but it's possible that we're going to need the whole uh, gallon in there. And that would mean that it was over by about a quart, maybe a little bit more. All right, pump's all set. Let's get it going again. should have a full gallon in there all right so we've got the fluid in but I'm having a hard time getting a reading and I'm wondering if I might have to turn it on I'm confident that I have a gallon of replacement fluid in there and I've replaced everything I took out minus just a little bit and it was a little bit overfilled so let's see if the tractor uh, moves with what's in there and maybe after just a couple of minutes we might be able to get a better dipstick reading. Yeah, neighbors are gonna love this.
Well, here we are a couple of days later to finally finish out this video. And what had happened is it got too dark for me to be able to see, but we had a gallon put in there, but I wanted to show you now uh, with some light. This is about what one gallon is in there. It's just barely, just barely wet a little bit. Ooh, dirty finger. And obviously it's, it's like way too low. It's not even on the low hash mark. So what we've gone ahead and done is I've got one quart uh, that's already been pre-measured and, and put into the container here. The total capacity, remember, is 5.7 quarts. So right there, what's in that container, that would be five. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is just pump half of it in there, and then we'll do a level check. So it's all ready to go in. So already down the tube and as a final note the tractor does drive back and forth which you saw a little bit of that in the dark footage from the other night but just wanted to point out that the pedal uh, did feel spongy with the fluid being low so I kind of learned something in that regard that if you ever feel the pedal to be spongy definitely check the fluid immediately because it does drive uh, with it but obviously you don't want to drive it with low fluid <laughs> There we go, and that's going to transfer all the oil in. Now the pump's not very fast, but it's a good way to uh, serve as transmissions where it would be hard to get a funnel in there, and you'd probably just wind up making a mess. So we're just going to let the tripod record the rest of this, and then we'll check the level. All right, so it's a little bit tough to read, but it's coming up to about where the A is. So we're gonna go ahead and put the rest of what's in there, and that should be pretty close to where the level should be. We should wind up right below the full line. All right, so we've got the last little bit draining in from the pump line, and we've got all the fluid in there, so we're just gonna give it another check and see where we're at. Okay, final answer, we're gonna go with five quarts as being the exact amount that you need to swap out for a BDU-10. Uh, it's kind of hard to see it, but it uh, comes up right, uh, right about there, these. So that's with five quarts swapped out. 5.7 uh, is the amount that they uh, tell you what the total capacity is, but the actual amount is just a hair uh, less than that. And maybe the guy put 5.7 in last time. That's why it was a little bit over because it was up to about here where my thumbnail is. So uh, drives really well. We're going to give it a quick uh, test drive to see how it is, but I took it for a quick spin already. So here we go. forward all right that works good and let's try some reverse with it kids well that brings this episode to a conclusion of uh, changing your transmission oil so of course we had to find things out partially the hard way but in the end we found out that well for one we had a nice oil filter from 2006 right there 
which had never been replaced. So that was a fun discovery. And we also discovered that the total capacity is 5.7 quarts, but you actually want to replace about 5 quarts. Uh, when you're draining it out, that's about what's coming out, and that's about what you should be putting in. So other than that, there were no real snags. Uh, realistically, you don't need to pull off the back wheel to do this, but it was good to show you uh, just for the video, just to have better access for filming. Uh, taking the mower deck off is probably recommended as far as getting to the oil filter. It's a lot easier that way, getting an oil pan in there and all that stuff. But you also probably don't need to lift the tractor up to do this. And in the future we'll be making a more streamlined video uh, to show you how to do this more efficiently. But this is the 300 hour service and this is the first time we replaced it so that's the way this cookie crumbled. Uh, tune in on the next episode where we're going to be doing the engine oil, uh, checking the plugs, checking the air filter, and bringing to a close pretty much all the items that need to be looked at. Uh, fuel filter's already been replaced. So that's the end of that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Two thousand six. Wow. <laughs>